Hi everyone, Rich Crescenti here with another in our series of videos making music with Melodyne, and today is part three of our series showcasing the further integration of Pro Tools and Melodyne with ARA, and I am really excited about it because this makes everything we do inside Melodyne so much easier. Now in the previous videos we discussed how to put Melodyne on a clip or a track, how to control local and global playback, as well as open and close the window. Today what we're going to be discussing is how to bypass or compare your edited audio to the original unedited audio, how to clear out any edits that you may have made, and also how to render or commit any edits that you've made. All right, so let's dive in and take a look. And the first thing we want to do is understand how to tell if Melodyne is already on a clip or a track. Now you can always look at the Elastic Audio or ARA window right here and see that it says Melodyne, but that doesn't tell you much about the individual clips. I prefer this little pictogram in the upper right hand corner right there. You'll see there's a little picture of a Melodyne blob. That's what we're going to look at right there because this little pictogram actually not only shows you if Melodyne's on the track, but it shows you if that clip has been edited or not. So take a look. You'll notice this little pictogram is translucent right now. If I come over here to this piece of audio and edit it, watch that pictogram, it turns solid white. Same thing over here if I do any kind of timing edit or edit as well. If I change it over here, now this pictogram is solid white there as well. Now there's another indication that becomes very useful and I'll show you why in a minute. And that's all of these dots in the background, right? You can see them right here. Those really represent MIDI notes of this analyzed audio right here. And you can decide whether or not you want to see that by right clicking and coming over to where it says Melodyne and hide those notes. Now I prefer to show those notes and I'll talk about why in just a minute, right? I'm going to come back here and go to show notes. Okay, so this gives us an easy way to tell if Melodyne is on this track. Now let's talk about a way to bypass it, right? We want to be able to hear our original audio. And there's a couple of ways to do this, right? For one, we can right click and come over here to where it says under Melodyne and choose where it says bypass, right? And you'll notice those MIDI notes disappear right there. That's why I like this. That's a good visual indication that this particular clip is bypassed. Now that's a local function, right? That only happens to this clip. It did not bypass this clip. And the bypass function, by the way, is only available once you've edited audio. I have not edited this clip, so bypass is unavailable. Now there is another option, which instead of unbypassing or bypassing a local clip, what I could do is come over here to the track name and right click and come to where it says Melodyne and bypass there. And what this does will bypass any edited clips across the whole track. Also another very useful feature. My favorite though is actually this new function that we have, which is this button right over here in the upper left hand corner. This is the compare button. And this is like a global version of this bypass. Now watch this. When I choose this right here, not only do we bypass the audio, but we also get a visual representation that shows us the original blobs and it's grayed out, letting you know that Melodyne is sort of turned off globally. And to show you that, I'll come over here to another track. And if I click on this other track, you'll see it's also all grayed out, right? This compare button right over here is a global function. And I really like this. So this gives us easy ways to locally on a per clip basis, on a per track basis, or globally bypass Melodyne and be able to compare the original audio with our edited audio. Okay, now let's discuss taking some of these edits that you've done and removing them. There's a couple of ways that we can do this, right? For one, I could do the exact same thing, right click on this track over, on, excuse me, on this clip over here where it says Melodyne, and I could clear this out. And what this will do is remove any of the edits that have been done on this clip. And you'll even see that our little pictogram in the corner has returned to its translucent state, telling you nothing on this clip has been edited. You could also do that on the entire track basis again by right clicking on Melodyne and coming over here to where it says clear, removing them for every clip that's been edited across this entire track. Now that's great if you want to do this on a per clip or on a per track basis. However, sometimes you may want to do it to just one note. So let's 
edit this note so I can show you this right here. And this is where this right click context menu in Melodyne becomes very useful. If you come over here to the edit window and right click, you'll see this context menu. And up at the top, we have restore original. This is really nice because this can be done on a per note basis. And you can also undo just the timing or just the pitch changes without affecting the other. So I like this a lot because I can choose this one note and come over here to restore original pitch changes. And it just affects that one note. It doesn't affect any of the other notes. Now, if you want to affect multiple notes, you can always click and drag to select multiple notes. Or you can hit Command A, which will select every note in that whole track. And from there, you could right click and undo just the pitch changes, just the timing changes, or all of the changes. Really very useful ways to undo, clear out the edits that you've made on a clip basis, on a track basis, or on an individual note basis. Now, there may be some times when you wish to commit or render your track. And there's a couple of reasons you might want to do this. One is that it can free up some CPU and RAM. If a track has been cleared or bypassed, Melodyne is still analyzing the audio and Melodyne is still using up computer processing power. So maybe if you're running out of power, you might want to render these Melodyne tracks to free up some power for additional plugins or anything like that. Also, Sometimes for archiving purposes, you may want to commit all of these. And this is something that a lot of people recommend. If you really want to make sure that your audio will be heard the way you intend it 20, 30, 40 years from now, the only smart way to do that is to commit and render all of your tracks or stems. And this is not just true for Melodyne. This is true for VSTs, for reverbs. Who knows what's going to happen in the future? So to future-proof your sessions, you may want to commit and render everything. However, to allay your fears, this new version of Melodyne with Pro Tools holds all of the information in the session. So for backing up your sessions, for sending them to somebody else to work on and mix, you don't have to worry about committing or rendering these tracks. All the information is stored in the session. There's no additional information anywhere else. It works very, very smoothly and well. So you don't have to worry about this really unless you're trying to do long-term archiving or to free up some computer processing power. All right, so let's talk about how to do this, right? There's a couple of things that I can do. I could right click on this clip and come over to where it says Melodyne and render. And what this will do is render that audio for just this one clip. And you'll see, we no longer show the pictogram in the corner. We no longer show the MIDI notes. This clip has been rendered with the Melodyne edits that we've made. By the way, if you happen to do this and want to undo that, you can just hit Command Z to undo that there as well. You also have the exact same functionality right here by coming over to this and choosing render as well. Now, another way that you can do this is to remove Melodyne from the track. And the easiest way to do that is to click on this little guy right here and come up to where it says none. And when you do this, it will basically tell you, you can't remove Melodyne and keep these edits. So you can either revert back to the original audio or commit the audio the way that you've done this. If you check this out, if I hit commit, this will do it for the entire track, right? So now this whole track has no Melodyne on it whatsoever. You can also Command Z to undo that as well. Now I know that said commit, but I wanna point out something really important right here. That is different than right clicking on this track and hitting commit right here. Committing from the Melodyne window will only commit Melodyne. However, right-clicking and hitting commit right here will not only commit and render Melodyne, it will commit and render any of the plugins you have instantiated on this track as well. So now we've seen some easy ways to bypass your edits, to clear them out and remove them, or to commit and render them. Hope you've enjoyed this today. Thanks.